maintain your task list with Timeline View. There are a myriad of project management apps out there on the market. So much so that it would be someone's actual full-time job to research, test, shortlist and implement such a solution. That's a huge cost before we even start talking about the per seat per month subscription model. This can very quickly price a third party application out of your market or set up a situation where some teams have and some have not. As a lover of Google Sheets, I've been using it for years to map out deliverables or plan events. I'm very comfortable using the filter functionality to track tasks by assignee, by status or by milestone. However, with any project, you may find resistance from some users who find the dense data visually challenging or for some who straight up are fearful of using Sheets. Google's introduction in the last year of the timeline view may help you to overcome those challenges and create a project plan which is visibly accessible and easy to use. Let's check out the timeline function. Here is a very basic event plan that we are going to set up in Timeline View. It's possible to have way more columns than this, but today we'll look at what you can do even with this small amount of information. There are three columns needed to drive the Timeline View. The first informs the card name. In this sheet, that is the task column. Next is the start date. And lastly, a column that informs the timeline when the task should be completed. This can be provided either as an end date or as a duration period, for example, 21 days. Once these basics are in place, the timeline will be able to populate. From the Insert menu, select Timeline to open the timeline pop-out. Here we are going to select the data range. As I had cells highlighted when engaging the timeline, these have appeared as my data range here. Below you can see a suggestion from Sheets showing the range A1 to F62, as these are the cells which currently contain data. I know that this project plan will need to be organic and I would like new tasks to be pulled into the timeline as they are added to the spreadsheet. So for that reason, I'm going to change the range to A1 to F999. This will encompass the whole sheet. Now click OK. A new workbook appears in my Sheets file called Timeline 1, and this shows the tasks in a Gantt chart and opens the settings pop out for me to adjust my timeline. The very first thing you will notice is that I have an error warning that I have 942 data errors. This is not a concern to me as these areas are the rows of the spreadsheet which do not yet contain information. So far, Google has picked up on some details to build the timeline. The start date, end date and task columns have been picked up and these appear in the cards displayed across the timeline. Now we can start to manipulate the data to create a view best suited to how we need to see the timeline. Firstly, we can colour code the cards. The colour of the card is pulled from the formatted colour in the source data. I had three columns colour coded. Milestone was the first that Sheets found and has pulled this through. Using the drop down, I can change this colour code according to assignee or to visually display status with traffic light colours to show complete, pending and not started statuses. Alternatively, I can simply turn off the card colour. Next, I can add card detail. Remember, the card currently displays the start and end date and the task name. Here, I can select one more detail to display. I can make the assignee visible on the card or perhaps even the task status. In this case, I'm going to keep the status detail on the card and color code the cards by their assignee. Lastly, I can group the cards according to different columns. Without the grouping selected, the cards will display in date order as per their start date. I can group these by the column I called Milestone, which is grouping them into associations. So here we can see all the tasks associated with transport, then venue, and so on. I can group these by status to see a block of completed 
or pending tasks. Once fully arranged, I can close the setting pop-up to get a full view of the timeline. So, with the timeline tweaked how I like it, let's look at how to view it. Click on the card to view the task details. This is where additional columns get pulled in. Sheets is great for this. I link to other documents, calendar events and add notes, all of which will become visible here. Use the Today button to snap to the current day in your timeline. The View Timeline By button will allow you to view down to granular days through weeks, months and years. Using the D, W, M and Y keyboard shortcuts to toggle between these. Fit more detail in the page with the Condensed View button. Or truncate the detail to remove run over text. I'm not a fan of this myself, but with a very busy timeline, this may be required. And lastly, reopen settings from the settings cog, allowing you to toggle the option fields around depending on the view required. Do you need to print the document? Do you need to print the document? Access print from the file menu. Or if you need to PDF and send the document, use the download options from the file menu. Remember, these are important files, so it's extra important that you ensure the correct controls are on the document. Ensure to assign permissions on the least privilege principle. In addition, there are other ways that you can protect the document from rogue editors where you need to assign editor permissions. Firstly, set up edit notification. From the Tools menu, click Notification Settings and select Edit Notifications. We want to see edits, so select Any Changes Are Made and then set the frequency. On very important documents where I don't expect many edits, I would select Email Straight Away. Using this function means I can quickly be notified when someone is editing the document and I can pop in to see what changes they are making. As we mentioned, the settings on your timeline can be changed at any time by an editor to add details or change up the color coding. This can become problematic if users are continuously changing the view. Once you are happy with the settings, right click on the timeline, select protect the sheet and set permissions to limit editing to yourself or yourself and a small number of editors. In this way, for those not given permissions, the sheet will be visible, but is not editable. So there you go. There's an introduction to the timeline feature. If you haven't been using this functionality to date, see where it can fit in some of your task oriented data heavy Google Sheets. There's a lot of visual usability here. It's easy to work with. And ultimately for important documents, you can lock down and protect the document. Until next week, see you then.